Hello viewers, welcome to today's episode of Women's View. My name is Anne Moremi, I'm your host. As always, it's a pleasure to have you with us and uh, remember that uh, we are live streaming on YouTube as well as on Facebook. Our YouTube handle is GBS Kenya and our Facebook handle is also GBS Kenya. Please uh, send in your comments, send in your questions and remember to subscribe as well because uh, this will help you be able to have a look at our previous shows and then uh, you can keep commenting as we go along. We also do have uh, an SMS line. The number is 21144. So welcome and enjoy the show. So in, with me in studio, I have a very interesting and uh, lovely guest. I'd like to give her this opportunity to introduce herself. Welcome. Hello, viewers. My name is Sheila Ndanu. Welcome, Sheila. Asante it's a, sana. It's a pleasure to have you here. And uh, viewers, today we're going to be talking about beauty from the inside out. So Sheila is with us, and uh, Sheila, tell us a little bit about what you do. Okay, I'm a beauty therapist, mm -hmm. and what I do is skin care yes. um, with facials. So that entails um, cleaning the skin, yes. removing the blackheads, the mm -hmm. whiteheads, which are caused by excess production of the body's natural oil called sebum sebum yes okay. and you know what mm -hmm. one thing i can when i look at your skin it looks lovely thank you so you know you're not just about talk <laughs> 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 the things that you do for others i think that you do for yourself when you get done mm -hmm. they get done to you because your skin is actually glowing thank you yeah so welcome to the show Asante Sana. and uh, yeah so viewers today we're going to be talking about beauty but we're going to be talking at, at looking at it from what we can do to be able to get let it be from the inside and coming out. So yeah, enjoy the show and uh, have a good time. So Sheila, yes, I'm lucky because I know a little bit about you. Mm -hmm. But I'd like you to tell us a, li a little bit about yourself so that the guests can be able to connect with you. And uh, I'd like us to go a little bit way back. Mm -hmm. Where did you grow up? Tell me about your life growing up as a child. Okay. Yes. So most of my life, I grew up in Nairobi South B. Ah, okay. And I went to a convent school mm -hmm. um, from Standard 1 until my O-levels. Okay. Yes. So to, you, you were in a girl's school all your life? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> How was that? Did you, because you know when you study with girls only, do you, and then you go out home and meet boys, do you feel, you know, like weird? <laughs> No, it was actually very nice, uh -huh. and I guess I had nothing to compare. Yes, you had nothing to compare because, you see, primary, you were in a girls' school exactly. as well as high school. Exactly. Was it boarding or day? It was day school. I went home every day. I, I like that you went home every day. And, of course, in South B, there were both boys and girls, so you didn't actually miss out on interactions exactly. with boys. Yes. Oh, that's good. So when you were in high school, I'm sure you started thinking about your career choices. Mm -hmm. What did you have in mind to do when you left high school? Um, by the time I was leaving high school, I didn't even have anything in mind. Mm -hmm. But after my exams, I just got this natural calling yes. to do beauty. Uh -huh. So I approached my parents yes. with this idea. Mm -hmm. And they actually granted me my heart's desire. Wow. They told me, go for it. And um, I thank them for that. And God bless them. I know. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Because sometimes when we tell our parents that we want to do things which are viewed as non-academic, yes. sometimes they frown on them. Exactly. But uh, I'm happy that for you, your parents were very accommodative. Yes, they were. And uh, they were able to let you pursue your dream. Yes. Yeah. So are they still alive? Yes, they are. So very much so. Say very thank much you to so. them. You know, they're going to be watching you. I hope they're watching. <laughs> I love you, mom and dad. Yes, yes. Thank you so much for giving, for letting Sheila do what she does because she's helping a lot of women, you know? Yes. Because, you know, for us women, we're very, we're very pro beauty. I mean, we love beauty. Yes. True. Not just the face, but even the dressing. I love your attire. You look amazing. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're all about fashion and beauty. Yes. All right, so when you decided to do beauty, uh, beauty, did you go to school to study for that? Did you go to a college? Or? Yes, immediately I completed my O-levels. Mm -hmm. In January, I went to a beauty school called Aphrodite. 
Aphrodite. Yes. Okay, I have not had a wheat. It's a long <laughs> way back. <laughs> long way uh, back. Yes. And there I learned manicure, pedicure, facials, uh -huh. makeup, uh, massage, yeah. reflexology. And I got even international recognition. I got two international certificates. Wow, so look at work. you. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Yes. So you're very passionate about it, actually. You're interested in it and you're passionate about it. Yes. Okay. All right. And then when you finished, did you start to work immediately? Yes, or? immediately. You immediately. didn't You didn't have to tarmac and look for a job? No, no. Immediately I started. Where did you, what, where was your first job? My first job was at the salon at the Hotel Intercontinental Nairobi. Yes. Actually, you mentioned earlier that you worked in quite, uh, you worked at a place, at um, high-end hotels mostly. Yes, correct. Mm. So that was your first job? That was my first job. Wow. Yeah. Were you excited? Oh, very, very. You had a salon so soon. <laughs> Okay, I was employed, <laughs> yes. but the exposure was great. Yeah, the exposure. Yes. Because what are the kind of clients you're dealing with mostly there? Mainly, it was um, the tourists yes. and the crew. Mm -hmm. British Airways used to oh, yeah, reside used to... there. Mm -hmm. And you know, treatments are very expensive out there in Europe. Yes. So I was kept busy by the stewardesses. Oh, fine. So, you, I mean, immediately you finished, you landed a plum international. <laughs> sort of like your, your clients were international. Exactly. And that is very good because you really then had to, you, you, you already had your international certificates, which you, because you, you had passed very well. Correct. And then you immediately went to work on people who were exposed. Yes. So I think that your, your, your level of work then was very high, high level, right from the go. Correct. Okay. I got a good foundation. You did. And I'm happy to report the foundation continued. It did, because that was a while back, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so did you stay there for long? I was there for about two years, uh -huh. and then I moved to the Norfolk. Wow, girl, <laughs> you're just high, high flying. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh -huh. yes, and then after the Norfolk, I went to another salon on Kwenange Street. Yeah. And then I got an opportunity there to work at a health farm. At a health farm? In Nyanyuki called Opejeta. Uh -huh. which, yeah, I know which was the work. home of the renowned Arab businessman, Adnan Khashoggi. Yes, 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 yes. I've mm. heard of Opejeta. I have not been. How is it? Are oh, it's awesome. Beautiful. 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 Wow. So actually, a lot of the beauty that you've done, you've interacted with a lot of tourists. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So do you ever interact with, uh, I don't want to say locals. <laughs> <laughs> you know how it sounds, so <laughs> Yes. But did you, at, at, when you were at working at the hotels, yes. did you have uh, Kenyan clients coming in as well, or was it mostly just It was both. It was both, it was both because okay. you'd have the locals coming up for the weekend, mm -hmm. and then the, the tourists and so on flying in. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what did you find yourself like uh, uh, most interested in? Because you know you studied manicures, mm -hmm. you studied pedicures, and to be honest, that was a while back. I think that the saloon industry has grown a lot in the last few years. Yes, it has. Did you did you used to have like uh, very few people coming in for manicures and pedicures then for you no know, Kenyan ladies? No, it was um there was a market for it even then. There was a market for it oh, even yes. then. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Ah. There was a market. Because one of the things I remember growing up, I don't know whether it's just me. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe you'll have to think about your girls. Yes. We used to have sleepovers, uh -huh. and then in the sleepovers, of course, my girls' friends would come or I'd go to their homes. And one of the things we do is we all had these little boxes of nail polish, yes. and we used to, to paint the nails ourselves. You yes, know? that's very true. Yeah, and I, nowadays, everybody almost from a very young age, like I have a niece, mm -hmm. and she already has started going to the salon to have her nails painted. Yes. And so I wonder, this generation, I don't think they even have the skill or even the time to do it themselves. Yes, that's true. Yeah. That's very true. And I agree with you. Yes. Yeah. The mm. last, I think that, I think the salon industry has really grown. So anyway, my question was, mm. you could do manicures, you could do pedicures, you do facials, you do massages. Is there any particular one of these that you found yourself more interested in? I love facials. You love facials? I've always loved facials. Okay. Yes. So, is there any particular reason? <laughs> um, um, I find a client comes in and mm -hmm. the skin is full of pimples and yeah. discoloration and all those yeah. things. Mm -hmm. So, we do the whole treatment and then by the end of it, the skin looks so good. Mm. So, you've got like a nice clear canvas. Yeah. Mm. Tell us about, because of the experience you have, huh? when a lady's face is not like glowing and she has pimples or she has black hair does that affect the ladies on the inside does it affect their self-esteem 
what has been your experience? Yes, yes. Um, it does affect their self-esteem mm -hmm. because when you meet somebody, the first place you look at is the face. That's true. Yes. So it can really affect them and bring their low self-esteem and mm -hmm. depression and so on. Yeah. And I've had one of two one or two clients like that mm -hmm. and it was so bad in fact it's the parents who actually brought them in so the it was it was their daughter yeah their daughter maybe during teenagehood um or the, she... like in the 20s in the 20s yes yeah. okay mm. but um, i'm happy to report yeah. that with um diligence and them coming in mm -hmm. we were able to rectify that problem okay so a lot of times when we when a lady finds herself with skin that is problematic mm -hmm. Um, what are some of the causes that, re that lead to that? Because I'm sure our viewers would love to hear, is it something that is genetic or is it a lifestyle issue that maybe there's something they're taking that is interfering with their skin? Okay, it's a bit of everything. Okay. Sometimes you find it's genetic, mm -hmm. sometimes you find it's hormonal, uh -huh. there's an imbalance yes. with the hormones. Okay. So sometimes we do the cleaning and then sometimes we do need to get help or from a gynecologist, maybe uh -huh. to help balance out the hormones, mm -hmm. but that's in worst case scenarios. Yes. But most of all, I find it's lifestyle. lifestyle. You find people are not eating properly. Mm -hmm. People are not drinking enough water. Yeah. People are also overindulging in alcohol, mm -hmm. which really dries out the skin. It does. Yes, it does. It does. Oh my, are you saying that people should now not have the... <laughs> <laughs> Everything should be in moderation. In moderation, yeah. that's the key, yeah? Yeah, moderation. Or, or, or maybe if you're, if you're the kind of person who does take alcohol, you need to be aware and maybe take a lot, lot more water. Yeah, To lot. be able to counteract that effect. Exactly. Oh, I didn't know actually that alcohol, right? Yeah, alcohol well, you know, actually, you out. It, actually, alcohol dehydrates your body. Exactly from the inside, right, exactly. your organ. No, mm. And you find yourself going to the toilet more often. Mm -hmm. So it actually gets to the skin also, it dehydrates the skin. Yes, and then it also sometimes affects the liver. Yeah, the liver, of course. Yeah, so you find some people having a yellow undertone or yellow eyes, which is now bordering to jaundice. Yeah. Yeah, so one really needs to be very careful. Mm. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah, so that's something that people need to realize. Mm -hmm. Because you know what, Some of the, a lot of the things that we do, affect us and sometimes you're not able to make that link exactly. so you find that you're having problematic skin but you're not able to to link your lifestyle with yes. that so here you are forever trying to apply makeup to hide it exactly even as you're going on with your lifestyle and not making changes there that's why today we're talking about beauty from the inside out, out. Correct. yeah okay okay anything else that people do that affects the skin you had mentioned earlier that smoking also does yeah smoking also removes the oxygen Mm. from the body and from the blood. Okay. I have an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> you might find this weird. It's okay. You know ahead. what? A lot of men drink. Mm -hmm. A lot of men smoke. Mm -hmm. And a lot of men do not have pimples. Yes. What is the issue then? Because, you know, they're not having pimples yet. The women are doing this thing and they have pimples. No. Is it about hormones or what? No, by the way, the composition of um, the male skin and the female skin is exactly the same. Yeah, okay. it's exactly the same, and I've had a lot of male clients as well. Yeah, yeah, and most of them do have little spots and things, but you might not be able to see them with the naked eye. Oh. But you see, when we are doing our work, we use a magnifying lamp. Yes, you so do. you'll find there are little spots underneath the skin mm -hmm. that need to be pricked out to create an opening to be able to extract. Yeah, yes. But nevertheless, but nevertheless, do you find that women have more <laughs> but of the women? Issues? How come? You know? <laughs> I'm very curious. <laughs> I think even women, I think we wear many hats. Yeah, we So do. from trying to run the home yeah. and work yes. and so on. So I think the stress kicks in also. Mm -hmm. So stress is also another factor oh, yeah. towards bad skin. Okay, yeah, because actually we're talking about what, what, what it is that causes bad skin. So mm. we've talked about lifestyle, we've talked mm. about alcohol, alcohol smoking, smoking, even stress, huh? Yes. Wow. And um, also lack of exercise. Mm -hmm. We need to do a bit of exercise, even okay. if it's um, three or four times a week. Yes. Just to walk, just to get the blood circulating, to get the heart working, mm -hmm. to get the muscles toning. That affects the skin. Yes, it does. Wow, mm. you know, a lot of, anyway, the thing, the, the thing is that uh, the truth of the matter is that a lot of our organs are all interrelated. True. So you can't be 
you know, cheating on this side and expecting <laughs> positive results on the other. That's true. They all yeah. have to complement each other. They all other. have to complement each other. Yes. And also sleep. Ah, mm -hmm. rest. So these days people are so busy, hustling, bustling. Yeah. So you find we're not sleeping enough. Yeah. And that also takes a toll. So, so because you've got a lot of experience. I mean, you started working in which year? When you finished your own levels, your first job at Intercont was which year? That was in 1982. 1982? Yes. Wow. Do not ask me how old I was then. Okay, please do not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. From 1982 to now, that is a wealth of experience. Yes, I'm now 53. I know. You look so lovely. Thank I mean, you. your skin is <laughs> tipped off, you know? So tell us, are there any trends that you've been noticing in this? in this range of time, maybe uh, in terms of the skin of women, are there certain things that are there now that were not there before? Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing that is now in, in this time is um, bleaching. Bleaching, Bleaching yeah. of the skin. Yes. That's, that's a true. big problem. It is. And not only with women, now I see even men are bleaching themselves. What? Yes. I thought men should be tall, dark and handsome. <laughs> no, 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 no. They no. want to be tall, light and handsome. <laughs> Yes, I want to be yellow, yellow also. Where has that, that was not common in the 80s? No, it wasn't. There were a few isolated cases mm -hmm. of um, people using Ambi, mm -hmm. but very few. Yeah. But these days it's rampant. Yeah, it is. I yeah. mean, you just go to River Road, you find these ladies just calling you, Auntie, Auntie, Mafuta Yauso. I know. And those concussions are detrimental. Tell us about a little bit about what is it that is harmful about them. First, let's talk about the on the skin mm -hmm. before we talk about the deeper issue because when you find that you're not comfortable with the way that you look yes you know it's not a superficial thing mm -hmm. it's an internal it's thing. from inside and you feel inadequate you feel inadequate but yes. before we get to that mm -hmm. let's just talk about what is it that this this these creams have that affects the skin okay these creams have um an ingredient called mercury yeah, I know mercury. It's and poisonous. Mercury, it's toxic. It's toxic. We know and mercury. It's <laughs> the way you're talking about it's like some <laughs> flambo thing. <laughs> mercury is what is in the thermometer exactly. that goes up and, up okay. and down mm -hmm. to according yes. to the environment. Yes. They have it. Ha so those ingredients have mercury. They have mercury. Okay. So once you start applying the mercury on your skin, mm -hmm. the mercury goes into your blood system. Okay. With time. Yes. So, of course, that goes and starts poisoning your mm -hmm. organs inside. But what does it do to the skin? Does it, it actually lightens? It lightens the skin. It starts um, destroying the melanin. Mm -hmm. Melanin is the body's natural pigmentation. Yeah. Like what we have. Yes. Us as Africans, because we are the darkest from the human race, yeah. we have the most amount of mel melanin. And melanin helps us. Yes, it does. First from... of all, it makes us beautiful because exactly. black is beauty. Exactly. But on top of that, it has other certain benefits. Yes, to protect us from the sun's rays. Yeah, because we happen to be in the tropics. Exactly. Where that's mm. where the sun focuses. And especially now in January, this, this, the sun this time around, eh? Yes. It's like it has come with its, ma <laughs> its mother, father, and twins. You know? Exactly. And so if you don't have melanin, the sun uh, now just destroys your skin. Yeah, so that is a God given. So melanin is a God given gift to us to protect your skin. To protect your skin, exactly. And then of course, enter check in man yes. is coming to destroy. <laughs> <laughs> and I might okay. add, that's why you find like the albinos. Yeah, they have to protect themselves when they go out. They have to wear a hat. They have to mm, wear sunglasses. That's true. Yeah, because they can't tolerate. Yeah, the because the sun, the sun actually burns them. It burns them. Yeah. So now when you go and bleach your skin, sooner you, or later, you'll be burnt. And the thing is, you know, it's, it's very interesting because when you're an albino, it's actually a condition. It is. That you really, you're born with and you have to live the rest of your life. And it's very complicated because being in a tropical country, it's mm -hmm. having to wear a hat. Yes. And even the way the, the skin looks, it looks very, very light. Yeah, it is. You know? It is. Is it, would it be, by the way, easier for them to live outside Africa, like in cold places? Yes, it would be better. So they should consider moving. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not like that. But it would be kinder to it them. It would be kinder to their skin. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm. So why is it that uh, women are feeling the need to, to remove the melanin? Because you know what? When clients come, one thing I know about salons yes. is that other than salons being a place of uh, cleaning your nails, doing manis and pedis, it's also really a place where people come and talk a lot. Yes, that's very true. 
Yeah, it's That's a place for kufungwa true. roho. Kufungwa <laughs> roho, exactly. Yeah. So, what are the what are the people saying? Why are women feeling such a great need to 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 be right based on your conversations with them in the salon? Mm. Most of them come from very rough homes mm -hmm. and rough marriages, mm -hmm. um, difficult um, children. Yeah. So when they come there, they are very broken. Okay. And they feel it's a safe space yes. because they feel you're neutral, mm -hmm. you're not judging them, mm -hmm. you do not know where they're coming from. Yes. So once they have your confidence, you find they start opening up. Yes. So what I do personally is I don't judge, I don't mm -hmm. even give them my advice, mm -hmm. I just listen. Yeah. And sometimes that's all they need you to do, just to listen. Yes. And then what I do is I give them an encouraging word, mm -hmm. a word in season. Yes. Mm. And yeah. does it help them? It does. Okay. So you find they keep coming back. That's yeah, why I've had so many clients for so many years. I know, that's them, a long time. 20 years, 25 years. And you've seen them? Yes. Mm. So you find them coming back and sometimes I believe it's not even for the treatment. It's just for that, it's for that space. It's for that experience. It's good for their mental health. It's for the experience. Yeah, for the experience. Because yes. they come and they get their facials done, yes. Mm -hmm. They get their reflexology done, yes. yes. But on top of that, they're able to have uh, almost like fellowship with you, like exactly. just a very cut to heart moment, exactly. you know? And you've been in their lives for long, you know, 20 years is yes. a long time to be with somebody. True. So yeah. you understand them, you know their stories <laughs> when they're talking about so, and so you're like, I know who that is. Exactly. <laughs> So, yes, there's a spiritual... There's a spiritual thing. So, but why are they bleaching? Is it that they feel inadequate or... I think there's what also peer pressure. What message is given to pressure. women? Uh -huh. There's peer pressure. Yeah. And what I find is once you do the bleaching, yeah. you may look good for a while, maybe mm. for a month or two. Mm. You know, your skin looks even it and looks everything. It looks okay, yeah. But after a few months, mm -hmm. then the repercussions kick in. I know. You I find can you imagine. can't go out because you've got low intolerance. To the sun. To no? the sun. Mm -hmm. So that also starts isolating you slowly. I know, because you have got to be holed up in your home all the time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you become a prisoner. Yes. And then some people you find um, they cannot maintain. Even if um, the repercussions don't occur so fast, it's also an expensive venture. Oh, so you mean you have to, it's not a one-off thing? You no, don't no, it no, once. it's a continuous. It's for the rest of your life. It's for the rest of your life. So the minute you don't have any money to buy your next um, dose, the blackness starts kicking in again. Oh, but that's good because, uh, I mean, really, what we want is for them to stop bleaching so that the, 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 the melanin can continue. But you find the skin is never the same. And and also, when, when you stop, the evenness, you yeah. find like now the, yes, the melanin no is coming not evenly. Not evenly. Yeah. And if you look closely, you find there's like a green deposit. What is that now? Underneath the skin. I think yeah. it's just the toxins oh. accumulating mm -hmm. and the skin becomes very thin. Yeah. Extremely thin. Yeah. In fact, true. you find you cannot even do a blow dry or even eyebrows because oh, the skin can the skin easily tear. Yeah. It becomes very thin, so you mm. find your blood vessels come to the surface of the skin. Mm. So any mishandling can cause bleeding. Okay. Yeah, yeah. that's true. And then it also affects the kidneys. Oh, so really? I know one lady. Oh, yeah, because those are toxins that are okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know one lady who got very sick with her kidneys. It affected them. She had to go to India. For treatment? Yes. Because of bleaching? Yeah, the bleaching. Using a cream, cream or yeah. using a tablet? Um, now they've gone a notch higher. Uh -huh. They do the cream, they do the tablets. Yeah. Yeah. Because you see, before people would laugh about, you know, the way you use the cream on your face, yeah. but then you forgot to use it on the neck <laughs> and on your hands. And then, so, you know, you're like, is this the same person? <laughs> What's happening? And there are, um, there are some areas of the body that the bleach does not respond to. At Especially all. like um, the knuckles. Ah, so your knuckles will always be... Yeah, your knuckles will also... Oh, always, mm. Okay. Yes, and like the knees and the elbows. Yeah. Mm. So now you always have to sort of try and figure yeah. out what to do with those parts. Yeah. Because they do... People tend... Even if people won't question you about it, they would have little question, be a question marks mark. in their, in their heads because they're interacting with you, they're talking to you, they're like, yes. you're so light, mm. but your hands, you know. Exactly. So it anyway. becomes like bondage. Do, do, do women know, okay, the, the people who sell these creams, of course, do not tell them about the side effects. No, of course they don't. Of no. course they don't, yeah. mm. So what happens is that somebody takes them, takes them for long, then they start noticing these issues, and then that's the time sometimes they come to you. Yes. Looking for a way out. And um, sadly, there's nothing we can do for them. Really? That's the end? That's the end. It's not something that you can re, re, mm. Mm. reverse? No. I feel like that's such a sad end. There, <laughs> there needs to be, there needs to be more hope. There's nothing we can do for them. Okay. Mm.
All right, I think that it's very important for ladies to hear that. Yes. Because then you need to really think about it when you when before you start something like that. Exactly. Yeah. And then also, like I was saying earlier, it's the peer pressure. Mm -hmm. and more psychology yeah your girlfriend comes you find she's looking good yeah so you join the bandwagon yes and before you know it it's a little too late it's a little too and late. sometimes the peer pressure can be coming at you from a friend it can also be coming at you from social media social media because we have a lot of these ladies who are calling themselves socialites yes and a lot of them have actually gone through the bleaching mm -hmm. thing and and of course now if those are the role models or the people that you keep looking at at when you flip your phones and want to be like yes of course that's now another issue yes and i don't know where they got this misconception that um bring being brown is beautiful i know yeah. we are fearfully and wonderfully made we are and yeah. we need to love ourselves we need to love ourselves. and we also need to understand that uh they you know also you see now when you talk about melanin being a protector our a protector mm. of ourselves you need to understand the deeper issue you know exactly Wow, okay, mm -hmm. so that's one of the things, you know, we're talking about trends. So mm -hmm. one of the things that has ha happened in the, the last two, maybe 10 to 20 years is bleaching is on the increase. Mm -hmm. What else are you noticing about women in terms of their, their skin? Oh, the excessive makeup. They are now applying. Thank you for bringing that up. That's that is a trend. <laughs> Do you know, have you seen these videos <laughs> of someone on, on like before? Mm -hmm. And then when they are done, mm -hmm. they look totally different. That's the thing. Is that normal? Hey, it's actually very <laughs> scary. In fact, I heard somebody saying the other day, uh -huh. when men now want to marry a lady, they yeah. should actually take them for an interview at a swimming pool. <laughs> so to see what will fall off and which areas are... Which, what, is, what is intact and what is not. You know, exactly. By the time you remove your wig yeah, and your the wig lashes, and you know, oh the gosh. tattoos. Do, those, do, do, do men find those things attractive? I mean, okay. I, I know you're not a man. Um, I'm not. What do you think? Do they find all these layers? Um, I think maybe they don't mind. Mm -hmm. For women, they have no permanent intentions with. Oh, okay, okay. I think okay. it's okay. Just mm -hmm. for just for the enjoyment for the for, for the short term. Yeah, for the you short know. term. But I think in terms of marriage, men will go back to. Something basics. more real. Basics. <laughs> a basic woman, a natural Or somebody woman. Who, who you know, at least you know how they look like. Yes, you know what I mean? exactly. Yeah, because yeah. You've got, when, you, when you're doing something long term, you actually want to know the person. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a person you're attracted to. Exactly. And so you do need to know how they look. Yes, you, know? you do. Mm. So that's a trend. Um, and yeah. I might add that I'm not saying makeup is bad, totally. I know. No, you're not. You, you do. But not, um, no. you can leave makeup um, for occasions, mm -hmm. like weddings. Mm -hmm. graduations just a bit something subtle mm -hmm. and people must know that there's makeup for day and makeup for night now these yeah, days I just see people ignorance. putting a lot of makeup yeah and <laughs> is it not something you can do on a daily basis because for example if let's say there are certain jobs are there certain jobs that uh, make it compulsory for example if you're if you're working oh. in the newsroom okay. must you have makeup every day I agree with you but you can do it subtle you yeah. can put just a bit of foundation just yeah. to give you a bit of um, good cover yeah. and just bring out your eyebrows a little bit mm -hmm. and maybe just a bit of lipstick. Yeah, yeah nothing too dramatic. So that's another, another thing that has happened. People are using makeup yeah. a lot. And not just using... People still used to have makeup in the 80s. Yes. But it was too... It was very subtle. It was very subtle. Mm -hmm. And the person behind the... You would still be them. Yes. It wouldn't be like a whole new person. Yeah, these know? days now it's a complete persona. I know you look at someone and you're almost like, is yeah. this you? Who are you? You know. And then it's also pressure for the person because yeah. the first thing when they wake up, they have to put that makeup on. Yeah, because for people like, to be able to relate to them and to even recognize them. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, what are what what are, what are the implications of that? Because if you shave makeup on a daily basis, what kind of a cleaning routine do you need to have? To be able to, how is your skin? Is, is your skin going to cope? Because those those uh, the make, makeup does is 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 chemicals, right? Yeah. It, does it yeah, affect yeah. the skin? It does affect the skin, especially if you're using the substandard ones, which are the ones that are most available, because mm. the top brands cost a lot of money. That's true. You know the Max, mm. the Black or Pulse, they don't come cheap. They don't. So you find people are buying the, the cheap ones from River Road, and again. <laughs> they come with many promises, you know. Ah, you're laughing. Kid. You know you're laughing because you've seen the, you know, for you, there's a there's a person who you're probably seeing in your head. Yeah. 
So what happens now, these people are busy hustling, so at the end of the day, they're so tired, they just go to bed with the makeup. And what's wrong with that? So sooner or later, you find your pores get very clogged up. Sooner mm -hmm. or later, you start getting infections. Wow. Yeah, you start getting infections. But at least that one is a way out. Yes, you can just come and get your skin cleaned properly. Uh -huh. Yeah. And okay. if it's very bad, again, you see a dermatologist who can give you a dose of antibiotics. Yeah, because now if there's an infection, mm. you do have to, to cure the yes. infection. Mm. And and we're talking about what period of time. If you if if you're overexposed to maybe makeup and you sleep with it, it affects your skin. How long will it take to heal? Or is it does it depend? It takes time. It can it take time. time. It can take time. Like months or years. It can take anything from a month. Okay. To to even several months. Yeah. yeah, but at least the good news is that for that one, there's a way out, and yes. like the first one, yeah. like bleaching. Yeah, bleaching, you know? yeah, there's no reverse. Mm. Mm. So I, I like what you're talking about, the advice. You advise people to wear makeup, not, mm. not every day. Not every day. If you can avoid it, not every day. Mm -hmm. But you can do it over the weekends, do it subtle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then over weddings, like weddings, functions. Mm. But the important thing is to remember to clean. Yeah, how, to clean. how should you clean your face at night in your home when you have hard makeup? You, you can use, um, use um, soap and water. Mm -hmm. Any some, soap? Yeah, soap, water, and also wipes. Mm -hmm. Or you can start with wipes, remove the excess, and then oh, when the excess yeah. is removed, just do soap and water. Okay. Mm. So basically, if you have makeup, it's a no-no to sleep with it. Exactly. Mm. Mm. All right. So those are the trends. A lot of makeup, bleaching. What about the, are people doing facials more? Yes, I, find, yeah, I find people are now aware. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the ones who are aware do come in regularly. Okay. Mm -hmm. What do you recommend? Uh, how often should a lady consider doing a facial? It depends on the individual. Mm -hmm. Some people can do one every three months. Mm -hmm. Some need one every two weeks. Every two weeks? Yeah, there's some people who've got very bad um, um, acne. Yeah. yeah. So Black they, heads, white heads. Mm -hmm. Puberty. I also I have a lot of young teenage girls because so the hormones. Mm. Yeah. Actually, I think the hormones at that age affect a lot for the for the girls. Yeah. Yes. So. And I mean, I, when we were teenagers, that was not even an option. And she's doing a facial. <laughs> Basically, you just wait it out, girl. You wait out until you stop being a teenager or whatever, the hormones stop raging. And when they stop raging or when you get your own job. Yes, you know. that's true. But now, as you say, there's a lot more awareness. <laughs> All right. Uh, guess what? Time is actually really running and you do need to take a break. Mm. So viewers, I hope that you're having um, a good time and you're getting to know more about the do's and the not-do's not when it comes to face and to skin care. So we need to take a short break, but we'll be right back. Thank you. People have dominance over themselves. Why? Daddy, no money. Give me money, I'll buy for you. Hey, Daddy, I say I don't have money. Hey, I know, Daddy. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? Or the leopard its spots? Jesus님이 우리의 모든 죄의 값을 다 지불하시기 때문에 예수님 다 이루었다라고 말씀하셨잖아요. So Jesus paid for all the wages of our sin. That's why he could say it is finished. 예수 알리파 샤라 담비 데니제트 로텐 디포스 아카세마 콤바 네쿠이샤. Everyone God is like the supercomputer. Bendo Mungu ni kama hii supercomputer. Welcome, this is G Radio, number one TV show, and we're coming live at GBS TV. And I'm your host, Isaac Tabinda. I'm the co-host, Evan Tignari. As usual, we have our DJ, DJ Deco. You can also send your views on my Instagram page, and Tignari underscore it. So 
also you can get me on our Facebook page as Isaac Tabinda. Thank you so much, guys. Keep it here. Kwa mara ya kwanza Rolling ya GBS TV inakuletea Echo Muziki. Ni show itakayokuwa inatambulisha vipaji vya DJ wasanii wenye uwezo mkubwa na madansa za ulikunyangua. Ivana Nam at Trubo ya Koko pamoja na mkali wao DJ Vokes siku ya Juma mida ya saa 12 hadi saa 1 jioni na Juma Mosi mida ya saa 9 hadi saa 10 ya mchana na Juma pili mida ya saa 9 kwenye Echo Muziki Live Audience. Echo Muziki hapa muziki tu. How many of you use your real names on Facebook? Wengine ni sweetie pretty. <laughs> you must succeed in being an ego and not a chicken. I'm seeing myself owning the biggest media house in Africa. Yes, I could employ you in fact. Yes. <laughs> All right, now it is going to another direction. But yeah. I, that's a question. <laughs> when you are born and when you grow up, now you do the work. You become a person who likes the country. You understand, right? I mean, not getting a job at Kenya Power, right? <laughs> and you know what? Who you are online is exactly who you are offline. And who you are offline is who you are online. So I've been to many places to give lectures. Whenever I say, Whenever I say, they respond with their eyebrows. Healing, hope, restoration. Amazing stories of real people like you who have triumphed over tragedy. Watch Turning Point International and be inspired to reach your turning point. It really ministers to the soul of man and as a pastor you benefit a lot because people learn and they learn how to cope with issues probably you don't even deal with in your summons. It's not reality TV, it's real life TV. Hello viewers, welcome to Women's View. What you see is what you get. Very exciting and fun. We grew up in a certain community and we were told this is how women are. <laughs> Everybody was coming with what they can get. <laughs> this is not a joke. You signed up for life. Very interesting. A woman is this. You want somebody else to do something for you that you can do for yourself. You know what you're doing, a great job. You keep doing it. You are going to school to become a musician. <laughs> like, seriously. <laughs> The show airs every weekday from 11 a.m. to noon and is repeated every evening from 7 to 8 p.m. I look forward to seeing you there. Welcome back, viewers. Uh, remember, you can interact with us. Today, we're talking about beauty and we're focusing more on skin care and how to take care of your skin, what to do, what not to do. And uh, yeah, you can engage us. Our SMS line is 21144. We're also live on Facebook and on YouTube. Please remember to subscribe so that you can be able to watch even our earlier shows. And uh, there's a lot to learn and there's a lot that, uh, you know, that can entertain you as well as there's a lot that you can learn from the shows that we've done in the past. So, uh, Sheila, we, yes. we continue. We've talked about bleaching. We've talked about excessive makeup. We've talked about not sleeping with makeup ever. And... Uh, I'm happy that you, you basically say that women are taking care of their skin more in terms of doing facials. But nevertheless, there are still some ladies who have never had a facial. That's true. And uh, maybe they are curious. They wonder, what does it entail? Okay. Could you kindly take us maybe quickly through what a facial process is and what the steps are? Mm, I'd love to do that. Mm -hmm. So once the client comes in, mm -hmm. we usher them into the treatment room. Yeah. Then we ask them to lie down on a bed. Uh -huh. And then um, I use a magnifying lamp uh -huh. to see what is happening with their skin, the condition of their skin. Yeah. So 
the magnifying lamp um, tells me about the amount of oil that is under the skin, mm -hmm. the black hairs, the white hairs, where there are infected um, pimples, mm -hmm. where there are... You can be able to look at a pimple and tell which is infected and which exactly, is not. Exactly, exactly. You'll wow. be able to see like a yellow discoloration, mm -hmm. which shows um, there's pus. Pass, yeah. Yes. So sometimes when you squeeze them out and yes. something comes out, it's not always oil. It could be oil. Yes, or it could be pass, oil uh, and pus. Ah, okay. Yes. So for okay. us to make sure there is no more pus remaining, we have to squeeze to squeeze it yeah. with a, an extractor, mm -hmm. which is a specialized instrument. Yeah. And then when we see the blood coming up, we know all the impurities are out. Ah. Mm -hmm. Sorry to interrupt. Please continue. Okay. <laughs> so the client comes. We yes. look at the skin. Yeah and then also gauge the skin type. Mm -hmm. We have um, several skin types. Yes. We have um, oily skin, yes. acne skin, mm -hmm. aging skin, and dry skin. Okay. So once we establish the skin type, then we know which product we are going to use. We ah. have different products. Some are oil-based and some are water-based. Okay. Yes. So then we cleanse the skin mm -hmm. with a cleanser that yeah. helps to remove um, the sweat, the dust superficially. Okay. Then after that, we tone off, which helps to normalize the pH of the skin okay. and to remove the excess cleanser. Okay. After that, we cover the eyes to protect the eyes mm -hmm. and then we steam the skin. Yeah. We have a special machine called the steamer that emits steam mm -hmm. and it's just water, natural water. Yeah. So that helps um, soften the skin mm -hmm. and the pimples and everything mm -hmm. so that when we are ready to extract, we don't have to use too much pressure and damage the skin. Yeah, because the skin has gotten softer. Yeah, it's okay. gotten softer, so mm -hmm. it's very easy to, to dig in and remove all the impurities. Mm -hmm. Thereafter, depending on the skin type, if someone has aging skin or dry skin or normal combination skin, mm -hmm. I may decide to do a massage okay. on the face neck and the shoulders mm -hmm. so that increases the blood circulation mm -hmm. and the oxygenation of the skin okay and it brings a nice glow and everything yeah. but i would not do a massage on acne skin or problematic skin yeah because now the skin is most likely infected so we don't want to spread the infection uh -huh. or it's already very oily so you don't want to add more oil ah uh, really yes mm, mm -hmm. okay so after the massage or when I decide not to do the massage, the next step is the mask. Mm. The mask helps close the pores. Yeah. You remember they opened up during the steaming? They did, so we yeah. need to close them again. Otherwise they're going to get yeah. dirty and clogged They'll again. They'll get clogged again. Then when you go out, it's very easy for you to get an infection. Oh. So we have to use a mask to close the pores and also to draw out any impurities okay. that may be still remaining. Okay. Then after that, um, you remove the mask and then you apply a moisturizer. Mm -hmm. Again, taking into consideration the skin type. Yes. Yes. Wow. Mm. You know, one thing I like about you is that you're, very, you're an expert in your field. Okay. You see, there are a lot of salons that have come up nowadays. Yes. And they say that they do these things. True. And I've even had stories of somebody <laughs> who has never had a facial yes. decide, mm, I need to do this, I need to do this. So you go and get a facial done. Mm -hmm. But it's like, rather than make, making your skin cleaner, mm -hmm. it becomes worse. And exactly. now even where you had normal skin, now yes. you start developing problematic skin. Yes, because so, they probably use the wrong products on your skin type, yeah. substandard products. Mm -hmm. And also the extractors are probably not um, sterilized. Oh, so yeah. you may get an infection from, from the a previous, previous client. Yeah. And <laughs> the stories are <laughs> endless. <laughs> so you need to seek professional. You need to seek professional help. And, yes. And you know what? Mm -hmm. I like the fact that you say the, uh, the treatment, the facial treatment, it varies mm -hmm. depending on the skin care, that, on the type of skin that the person has True. and what they've been exposed to in the past. Exactly. Like, for example, I thought that Every person who does a facial must get a massage. No, no, no. But I can, now that we've already had this conversation, mm -hmm. I can even imagine if your skin is bleached, yes. if it's too thin, mm -hmm. if you, we've talked about if you have acne and you have an infection, you don't want to spread it. You don't it. want to spread it around. If it's already too oily, because you see when you're massaging, you're going to put oil. Exactly. So you don't want to put more oil exactly. into an already oily, oily skin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, but I love massages. I, would, I wish that <laughs> if I come to you, I'd, I'm not going to fall into the category of those people who don't no, need a not. massage. I can already see. <laughs> you can have a massage. <laughs> oh, 
sorry, I do a lot of massages. Okay, so uh, that's interesting. Okay, so um, now another thing about you is uh, how can people get in touch with you? Because how you know you know you don't advertise per se because your people get to know you because of word of mouth mostly. Exactly. All right. So if somebody wants to come and visit you, do you do you have a number that you can give out or a Facebook page? Are you on social media? No, I'm not on social media. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old school. I knew that. <laughs> I'm old school, uh, okay. but um, I don't mind giving you my phone number. You can give your phone number so that yes. if people want to reach you, they can be able to do so. Exactly. Yeah. Can you let us have your number? Okay. My telephone number is 0722-801893. Okay. Please repeat. I repeat, 0722-801893. Okay, cool. At least people have it and people can call you. Yes. And... Uh, yeah, even so, for consultation, even I don't for, mind. Yeah, yeah, for consultation and even just for advice because uh, sometimes you can have been trying something mm -hmm. and it's not working yes. and, you're, and you're wondering where to go to next, yes. you know? Mm -hmm. So the fact that you've been in the industry, number one, the fact that you're trained yes, okay. and the fact that you have experience as well mm -hmm. means that you've been exposed to a lot of different types of skin situations. Yes. So it's very unlikely that somebody will approach you and you've not been exposed to such a kind of a condition. Yes. And one of the things that you talked about is aging skin. Mm -hmm. um, tell me a little bit about how, how does the skin of a woman change as she grows older, as she goes into her 40s, her 50s? You know, does it change and what should she do? Yes, it changes. Mm -hmm. In fact, it changes from as young as 21. Mm. Yes, you wow. need to start taking care of your skin as early as 21. Okay. But by the time you're getting to 40, mm -hmm. you are now getting into the menopause yeah. um, part of your life. Mm -hmm. So what happens, the estrogen mm -hmm. starts diminishing. Yes. And um, that really affects the skin. It affects the collagen. Oh, collagen yeah. is um, the body's natural substance that gives the skin the elasticity. Yes. So that starts giving way. Then you start getting dry. So it starts to sag or what? Yeah, it starts oh, to sag. Okay. The elasticity is less. Is lost. And then the dryness also kicks in, mm -hmm. and the skin starts getting flaky. Yeah. So you need to help your body, you need to support your body mm -hmm. by using now moisturizers, especially around the eyes, because yeah. we don't have any oil glands here. So you need to... To keep moisturizing. Yeah, moisturizing, yeah. drinking a lot of water mm -hmm. to keep it um, flaccid. Okay. Mm. And uh, how do women cope when they start seeing like the skin is hugging and they start seeing wrinkles? <laughs> you should embrace it. It's a season, a new season of life. Yeah. It's that's inevitable. True. It's like, yes, that's true. So when you are younger, most of us were fighting with um, bad skin, the puberty, <laughs> that came to pass. Then we came yeah. to motherhood, the skin was blooming. Mm -hmm. Now this is another stage, so you just embrace it. Yeah. Yes. But the, when you're, for, for ladies, we do have a lot of hormonal changes within us. Yes. Like when you're pregnant, how does your skin, is it, is it good for your skin or is it bad or does it depend? It depends. Okay. It depends on individuals. Mm. Some people you find they glow, I others know. it's like they're teenagers once again. I know, they have acne and you're like, man, yeah. this child is doing <laughs> things to me. <laughs> yeah, and some glow. Yeah, mm. but the, I like what you say. The, the thing is to embrace, to embrace each season. Each season of life. Because each season has pros and cons. Exactly. And each season will come to an end. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not going to be permanent. So, yes. yeah, embrace it. Do what you can to exactly. make things better. Mm -hmm. ah, okay, yeah. And then, of course, um, in the last... Another change that I think has happened in the last 20 years or so is uh, things like Botox. Uh, I don't know what I would call that whole um, cosmetic surgery. I don't know, yeah. Do you find that, you, are you getting a lot of clients who have done that and has it worked, Does hasn't it worked? Like with the bleaching, it's the same thing. With Botox, the minute you get your first injection mm -hmm. to help fill up um, the wrinkles and so on, yeah. it has to become a lifestyle forever. You can't do a one-off. Yeah, because it doesn't last forever. It wears out. It wears off, exactly. So you better have the finances you, exactly. to maintain that kind of a lifestyle. Exactly. <laughs> and, and is it cheap or expensive? <laughs> it's very expensive. And like, again, it's a, it's a new thing. It's so we don't know thing. what the side effects are. It's not been in the market long enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we don't know the side effects of these injections yeah. and these fillers that we are putting. So what are you all about? Are you for do it if you have the money or are you for embrace the season you're in and... 
Back to basics. Back to basics. <laughs> Keep it natural. Keep it natural. Keep it natural. Mm. Keep it natural. Yeah. Just the way God intended it. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it natural. You know, sometimes you want to remain young. As women, you don't, you don't want to grow old, you know. <laughs> no, it's not possible. Because, like, look at you, you're looking so young. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, whatever you're doing, you're using natural processes. Yes, yeah, I use natural. Yeah. I do my exercises every yeah. day. I do the walking I was advocating for. Yes. I eat properly. Mm -hmm. I drink. Mm -hmm. I sleep. I drink water. Yes. <laughs> sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can actually be able to have, to have glowing skin for almost all your life, mm -hmm. just because of your lifestyle. Yeah. And if you find it um, getting dull, mm -hmm. just get, give it a bit of a massage oh. to get the blood circulating. Okay. Yeah, and you'll and see the difference. Another thing I hear about facials, are they affordable? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. People have a fear. And mm -hmm. I don't know why they have a fear, because I'm sure most of them haven't even asked. Yeah. Yeah. So it's affordable. Okay. And if you really want something, you can sacrifice. Exactly. You can, you can sacrifice the coffee. Me. You can sacrifice the okay. KFC. I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about sacrifice. It depends on how badly you want something. You want something. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Mm. So guess what, Sheila? Time yes. is up. I can't believe it. I know. <laughs> An hour is over, girl. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> would you want to say something like a parting shot that maybe you'd like our viewers to take home with? Uh, when it comes to beauty, you know, maybe you can just give a parting shot. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'd say beauty starts from within. Yeah. What you see outside is a reflection of what is going in. Mm -hmm. So if you work on the inside, it will reflect on the outside. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And try to keep um, happy. Yeah. Try to keep healthy. It's never that serious. Yes. All right. Mm. Thank you so much. Thank you too. And thanks for having me. You're most welcome. I've enjoyed myself immensely. I think we need to do this again. And now we need to have people who have gone through some of these things that we're talking about. Yes. So they can give us their experiences. Exactly. You know? We can yeah. easily do that. We shall. Yes. All right, viewers. I hope you had a lovely time with us. And uh, thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>